Do you know that there have been periods when black populations were relatively more significant in Germany? For example, during the era of German colonialism in Africa, there were interactions between Germans and Africans, leading to some individuals of African descent residing in Germany. Additionally, in recent years, Germany has experienced an increase in immigration from African countries, contributing to the presence of black communities in the country. Follow us as we delve into the erasure of black population in Germany. If this your first time to our YouTube channel, welcome to Histrends, don't forget to like and subscribe. Recently, the press secretary of a prominent political figure made controversial remarks, drawing comparisons between the chemical attacks of Syrian leader President Bashar al-Assad and the actions of Adolf Hitler, the leader of Nazi Germany. These comments received substantial criticism for their perceived insensitivity towards the Jewish community and the immense suffering inflicted by Hitler and the Nazi regime. It is important to recognize that Spicer's statement not only disregarded the atrocities committed against the Jewish population during the Holocaust, but also overlooked the experiences of Afro-Germans, African-Americans, and individuals of African descent during the Nazi era. The narratives and perspectives of Afro-Germans in German society have often been excluded from both national and global discussions. While Germany's constitution prohibits racism, prejudice, and discrimination, there is a lack of comprehensive and enduring legal measures to combat racism due to the absence of a universally accepted definition of racism in the country. This intentional avoidance of state-sanctioned conversations about race in Germany stemming from the legacy of the Nazi era overlooks the historical remnants and ongoing manifestations of systemic racism against Afro-Germans, which permeate various aspects of German society. Despite historical marginalization and ongoing challenges, Afro-Germans and individuals of African descent in Germany have actively worked to challenge limited narratives surrounding their experiences during Nazi Germany and their overall conditions in contemporary society. Various organizations, such as the Black German Cultural Society, the Initiative Schwarze Menschen in Deutschland, Initiative of Black People in Germany, the Black German Heritage Research Association, and ADEFRA, a black women's advocacy organization, have provided platforms for Afro-Germans to assert their agency and share their stories. Afro-Germans have also been vocal in discussing their history and experiences. For instance, Afro-German author Theodore Michael, in his article, I Hated Human Zoos, Afro-German author on growing up black in Nazi Germany, recounted his upbringing under Hitler's regime. Michael, now 92 years old, shared his disturbing experiences of being forced to participate in human zoos where spectators would touch his hair and skin. Living in constant fear for his life, particularly during the Nazi era, Michael expressed that, with a face like mine, you can't hide, but I've tried. In her memoir, My Grandfather Would Have Shot Me, A Black Woman Discovers Her Family's Nazi Past, Jennifer Tiege, an Afro-German woman, unintentionally unraveled her family's Nazi history. Through a chance selection of a book from the library, Tiege learned that her grandfather was Amon Goeth, a Nazi commander infamous as the Butcher of Poishuf. While the Holocaust has predominantly been associated with the suffering of Jewish victims, stories like Theodore Michael's and Jennifer Tiege's have often been overlooked, resulting in the absence of Afro-Germans' lives and experiences from the global discourse on Nazi Germany. However, Clarence Lusane's book, Hitler's Black Victims, The Historical Experiences of European Blacks, Africans, and African Americans During the Nazi Era, challenges the prevailing one-sided narrative by shedding light on the violence and racial policies inflicted upon Afro-Germans and individuals of African descent. Lusain conducted interviews with black survivors of Nazi concentration camps to analyze the violence they endured. In an article titled Making the Black Experience Heard in Germany, authors Jamie Shearer and Hadija Haruna illustrate how during World War II, thousands of African-American GIs were stationed in Germany and formed relationships with German women, resulting in the birth of biracial or multiracial children. 
German professor Maria Hearn further discussed the presence of black children, known as occupation children, or Rhineland bastards, born to African-American GIs and white women in Germany. The existence of these children generated animosity among many Euro-Germans. Influenced by U.S. ideologies related to selective breeding and scientific experimentation on marginalized communities, the Nazis also implemented policies such as coerced sterilization, forced abortions, and other measures based on race targeting, Afro-Germans, individuals of African descent, and children born from occupation under the Nuremberg Laws. Although the original Nuremberg Laws of 1933 did not explicitly include people of African descent, they later expanded to encompass them due to the Nazi regime's perception of the Afro-German community as a source of opposition, strangely associated with Jews in Hitler's mind. Numerous individuals of African descent, including Hilarius Gilgess, Valida Snow, Jean-Marcel Nicolas, Lieutenant Darwin Nichols, Gert Schramm, and Majub bin Adam Mohammed experienced persecution during the Nazi era. Majub bin Adam Mohammed holds a significant place in German history as the first black person to receive an individual memorial in his adopted country, recognizing him as a victim of the genocide perpetrated by the Third Reich. Not only did Afro-Germans and individuals of African descent face persecution within Germany, but they also experienced oppression on the African continent. In a 2016 article titled, Germany Grapples with Its African Genocide, by Norimitsu Onishi, published in the New York Times, it was highlighted that during Germany's colonial rule in Namibia, forced sterilization was employed in an attempt to eradicate two ethnic groups, namely the Herero and Nama. Onishi pointed out that while the events in Namibia between 1904 and 1908 foreshadowed Nazi ideology and the Holocaust, the genocide committed in this former colony remains relatively unknown in Germany, the rest of Africa, and even to some extent in Namibia itself. Despite Germany's efforts to confront its racist, discriminatory, and xenophobic history, it still perpetuates advanced marginalization against black Germans due to a flawed political framework that fails to adequately address and prohibit what Philomena Essed refers to as everyday racisms. This deliberate neglect contributes to the persistence of racial indifference, silence, Afrophobia, and cultural homogeneity, which uphold the perception of European societies solely as phenotypically and culturally white. Moreover, the lack of cultural representation and imagery of Afro-Germans further reinforces their marginalization within media, academia, and socio-political contexts, as stereotypical depictions such as blackface continue to exist and hate crimes against Afro-Germans and individuals of African descent remain pervasive. Stuart Hall's theory on the politics of representation and his concepts of image regimes and the use of imagery as a means of domination can certainly be applied to the Afro-German context. Images that are false can become accepted as truthful discourses when connected to power, thereby perpetuating structural racism and ongoing disparities. However, Hall also argues that marginalized groups can employ images as forms of resistance to challenge hegemonic systems that promote racism, segregationism, and discriminatory imagery, rhetoric, and policies. In order for Afro-Germans to gain structural and discursive recognition, it is crucial for them to continue advocating for their humanity and challenging the use of imagery that seeks to undermine their experiences and struggles particularly within the context of Nazi Germany.